I am 32 years old. Do I look it? Can you look into my eyes and see the more than 14 years of homelessness, poverty, and food insecurity? While armed with a smile, that does not take away the shame, embarrassment, and pain every time my family received food insecurity. The worst being one of the worst decisions and experiences I've ever had in my life. Food distribution for the less fortunate activates something inside of me that I just can't explain. It looks like long hours and long lines, no one caring who you are, no one caring what you like to eat, while waging war against the worst weather conditions. I'll never forget that horrible soaking wet day when my family had to wait outside for hours as the rain poured down on us, only to be rewarded with expiring fruits, unlabeled canned goods, and a box of raisins. We didn't connect with anybody that day. We didn't give any insight into who we were or our situation. We left. And we would go on to be food insecure for years to come. The current food distribution model champions secondhand food, has operating times that aren't convenient to those in need, and lacks equity with the recipient. Now I know, I know that these organizations are often nonprofits, and their workers are often volunteers. But what if we treated feeding the hungry like any other business? Would any successful business completely ignore the end user in this way? <laughs> of course not. Bringing dignity, respect, and accountability into food distribution in the philanthropic sector looks like a commitment to quality, consistent touch points, and meeting the resident where they are. I'm reminded of a video I saw of Steve Jobs addressing shareholders in the 1990s. In the video, Steve is responding to a question from an irate shareholder. This interaction comes after Apple has lost $1 billion. The question is posed to Steve with the intent to disrespect, disregard, and offend him. But in responding with grace and understanding, he would say something that has stuck with me every day since. He said that at Apple, a technology company, that they don't focus on the technology first. Instead, they focused on the end user, the customer experience in their system, and then worked their way backward to the technology. He said they couldn't start with the technology and try to sell it because they wouldn't have been as successful if they did that. Food distribution has to start with the end user and the incredible benefits that come along with it and then work its way backward to the technology. This is so needed in the food distribution ecosystem. By every conceivable metric, we know about the donor and the donor experience. We know who the donor is. We know where the donor lives. We know where they work. We know why they give, and we know how often they give. An entire experience totally realized, but what about the recipient? Who is the recipient? Where is the recipient? How many touch points are being done on the recipient? That the organization draw a line in the sand, committing them to dignity and respect. Are there comprehensive systems in place to ensure that the data is correct? What if the same requirements we had for tracking donations and donors were in place to ensure that the end user was seen, heard, and respected? Steve Jobs understood then what we have to understand now. Food distribution in philanthropy has to embed dignity, respect, and empathy in every level of operations. I have a good friend. Her name is Ms. Myrna. And Ms. Myrna is the sweetest lady you'll ever meet. Ms. Myrna lives in Inglewood on Chicago's south side. Inglewood is a food desert and is also one of the communities with the lowest average household income. 
And like every other community, it is trying to survive a pandemic, worldwide unrest, and record level inflation. Ms. Myrna understands the struggle more than anybody else. She feels it every single day. Countless amounts of organizations have committed themselves to solving food security issues for residents like Ms. Myrna, for like a young Dion. But here's the rub. Ms. Myrna still goes long distances. She's still standing in long lines. She's still receiving food that is not becoming of a 70-year-old woman that just wants to be healthy, that just wants to live a healthy life. She's opening a box, and what she sees is not something that she would ever choose if she had the choice. And then after all of this, nothing. No follow-up, no connection being made. It's the same inefficient programming and the same lack of end-user experience and nothing has changed in more than 25 years. This is not the way to do it. Now let me tell you about another friend of mine. Her name is Ms. Lewis, and she's a recipient of our Dream Deliveries programming that goes all throughout the Chicagoland area. When we met Ms. Lewis, she was fearful. She was frustrated. And she was food insecure. She couldn't even remember the last time she had fresh fruits and vegetables. We immediately enrolled her in our Dream Deliveries programming. Dream Deliveries is our flagship programming where we deliver a week's worth of brand new fruits and vegetables directly to the doorsteps of residents all over the Chicagoland area. We immediately collect contact information and we immediately begin building equity and relationships with the recipients of our food distribution. What does this do? This ensures that the end user is seen, their experience is welcomed, and it champions equity-based programming. Because you see, Ms. Lewis is receiving this box weekly, 10 pounds of fresh fruits and vegetables, all brand new, while also receiving a bi-weekly message or call to connect with a team member. This touch point ensures that the resident and the recipient sees themselves in our programming. This touch point allows us to collect the perception-based data needed to have world-class service. This touch point is the lifeblood of our organization. Now's the time to say no more. Now's the time where we stand up and go against and actually ask ourselves, what is philanthropy? We have to go from being focused on the donor experience to being anchored, to being anchored in the end user experience. The corporate world has an acronym that companies love to use, CRM, Consumer Relationship Management. The entire world of goods and services has shifted to CRM-based approach, CRM-based programming. And yet food distribution and philanthropy has continued to stay stagnant. We need to know who is receiving the services. We need to know how to contact them. We need to know how to communicate with them so that we can build a cadence of communication that allows them to be seen, heard, and their lived experience to be lifted up. As a child, I always wondered why when we received food, no one talked to me. I thought it was odd, and then as I got older, I realized that this was commonplace. When it comes to where we're headed, we have to be better than where we're coming from. We need a plan. Those organizations that have the space commit to doing food distribution inside. Those who don't put a plan in place to ensure that residents and recipients are protected from the elements and from violence. 
We need a plan that is intentional in all phases to ensure that dignity and respect can be tangibly measured. We need a commitment to quality. No more secondhand food. No more giving what we don't want to get. Because the food that we distribute is not for the buildings that they are housed in. It is for us, our family, our friends, our loved ones. And that is extremely important. Now let's revisit nine-year-old Dion and try to make right a few things that can not only transform the experience of the end user, but transform operations for the organization. What if, instead of waiting outside in the rain while it poured down on us, we were allowed to stand inside a safe and dry location? What if, although less food, we open a box and what looks back at us is respectful, fresh, and is dignified? What if, before leaving that day, someone stopped my mom and she was allowed to give her contact information and build a relationship, creating a touch point? I cannot begin to tell you the dignity my family would have had. We would have walked out with our heads held high, coming back to connect with the organization to talk about what could have been done better and building a normal relationship. It has to be better. Because when it comes to food distribution in a philanthropic sector, I mean any sector, it can be better, it will be better, and it must be better. Why can't we deliver brand new produce directly to the doorsteps of our residents? Why can't we have programming that instead of championing the donor experience, we're based in the, in the experience of the recipient? I mean, after all the industries and sectors we've innovated in the last 25 years, I think it's time we do the same for food distribution in the philanthropic sector. Thank you.